I mispronounced this, I apologize. Uh, I want to say it's Vasily or Vasily. In any case, hi, Mike, can you please share your thoughts on naked put selling strategies, say two weeks out, and how you might suggest search for suitable companies, perhaps with elevated IV, not related schedule to earnings and other corp actions? Thank you. Okay, well, the naked put strategy is very popular. It's probably the second or third most popular strategy. Um, anytime we run a poll based on what we can see in analytics and power options users, and almost the same thing when you see um, some brokerages release it. Now, in the old days, the two most popular strategies would have been covered calls, buying calls, and cash secured naked puts. Why? Because in the old days, and I mean old days when Options Express was around, I first started trading them, been with Ernie for 23 years, had an Options Express account in the first two years that I was funding myself and trading, so on and so forth, to learn options better, uh, as I was learning from Ernie. And level one trading, all you could do was covered calls. That's that's just how it was set. That you could not do anything like now. You know, of course, you know, I can go right to Weeble or I can go to um, um, what's it, Robinhood. Now they're probably a little bit more strict now because of the trouble they got in. But you know, four or five years ago, you go to Robinhood and say, "Oh yeah, I want to open an account with a thousand dollars." Oh, here you're at level three trading. You can do credit spreads. You can buy calls. You can buy puts. You can do covered calls. You can do cash secured naked puts. You can do everything except for the purely naked stuff. Oh, okay. Let me go try that and see what happens, you know, kind of thing. But in the old days, Options Express, and, you know, we're talking back way back, <laughs> 2005, 2006, level one trading was covered calls. You had to do 30 trades or so before they would allow you to move up to level two, which was just cash secured naked puts and buying calls and puts. In any case, that's why they were the most popular because it took time to get to where you needed to go. So the naked puts can be profitable. As I mentioned, I don't do covered calls anymore because I want the protection of the caller or the protection of the married put position. I get more speculative with bull put credit spreads, which is very similar to selling a naked put. I'm just adding a lower strike put beneath of it to use leverage. But because I know I can lose 100% on those bull put credit spreads if it blows below both strike price and an unchanged event, this only represents about 15% of my total portfolio. So even if I have four positions open and we have a black swan event, I lose 50% on all four positions. Well, that only represents 7.5% of my total portfolio. Now, I sold an out-of-the-money naked put, cash security, for example, and the stock fell 10%. Well, I might be down 100% on that $2 strike difference that I had, maybe five contracts with so $1,000 on the bull put credit spread, but the cash secured naked put might only be down three or four percent because it had to fall five percent to hit the strike price and then additional five percent plus the premium you collected, you're only down three percent. So that's sort of the advantage of the in the money covered calls and the out of the money cash secured puts. Now, selling strategy two weeks out is great. That's what I like to use with my bull put credit spreads. But the strategy and the search criteria I would start with and I would prefer to use right here in Power Options are Ernie's picks of the day. What are the picks of the day? So many years ago, a customer called up Ernie on a coaching session and Ernie was walking him through the site. Well, this is where you go. You go into the search tool, under cash secured naked put, and you have these positions here. You can see the yield that's available, um, you know, probability. You can sort by the highest probability to lowest. You can adjust the probability in the search tools, find exact positions that you want. And the customer says, no, 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 no. You, you tell me what criteria I should be using. He said, well, I'm, I'm walking them through that based on your goals. Your risk threshold, what do you want? Do you want safer companies that at this time facility, maybe only a month out, might only have a one, one and a half percent yield with a good probability and let's say a delta of 0.4 or you know four or five percent of the money. We're talking about things like IBM, McDonald's, um, at the time Microsoft even. Those kind of companies were the ones that had the lower volatility almost like SPY. You know, your implied volatility on IBM was 0.14, or 14%. Uh, it was 12% on SPY, you know, so, you, so you're in there, in that range. But the return was lower. So what the customer is asking is that if my target is this, and if you're telling me that the expectations that you can make on a weekly or a monthly yield is at least 0.4 or 0.5% for weekly options, and maybe 1 to 1.5% 1 for monthlies, what should I use? 
So Ernie said, okay, I accept your challenge. So what he did for the covered calls, monthly expiration and weekly, and the cash secured or naked puts monthly and weekly, is he used our back testing tools to run about 40 different iterations. Options time frame. Now, you know, he wanted monthly or weekly, but he said, okay, well, if I use two weeks out, if I use one week out, what am I looking for? But with all the criteria that we have, he looked for higher implied volatility versus lower implied volatility. Uh, you know, strikes in or strikes out of the money, using Delta, uh, using a bid-ask spread, not using a bid-ask spread, avoiding stocks that had earnings between now and expiration or not avoiding stocks. Hey, what if I put in some technical criteria that we just talked about, some uh, stock above the SMA 20 or a positive MACD over a certain number of days? And then he'd run these different iterations, using stops, not using stops, and so forth. See here, he also recommended using a 7% stop. But this is his preferred criteria for what he would do. Now, not all of these are safer, necessarily, but what you asked is, okay, one or two weeks out, hey, you might suggest find suitable companies with elevated IV, not related scheduled earnings. Look at some of these returns for the weekly trades for next week, 2%, 2.6. Are there companies you recognize? Well, there's Robinhood in here, of course. <laughs> Rivian, I don't know if I would use that one. Carvana, Lemonade, Upstart, uh, iRobot, Marathon Digital Holdings, that's always a popular one as well. Uh, stocks at 24.73, the 24 strikes of 5.3% yield with a premium of 122 for seven days. Uh, it's only got a 57% probability above, the theoretical probability of the stock. And it's 3% out of the money, though, which isn't too bad. So what can you do now? You can use this as a stepping stone. This would be the starting point, Vasily. If I was opening naked puts today, I would probably use this weekly search. But if I wanted to go two weeks out, no worries. I would just change this to probably uh, eight to 16 days out in time. I'd keep everything else the same way, but I might go a little bit further out of the money because I can now that I'm giving myself more time. Maybe I want to increase this up to 0.8 instead of 0.5, but I'm keeping the same type of stock criteria, average stock volume, stock in an uptrend, avoiding earnings between now and expiration, the stock price requirement is based on your account facility, you know, that you can change that up to 400, 500 positive earnings per share growth as well. We submit that search. We're seeing the same companies, some different ones in there. Clean Spark, uh, Groupon came in, apply, uh, I don't know about AAOI, Rivian Sentinel, Canadian Solar. You're saying, oh, where are the higher price stocks? Well, this is sorting it by highest naked yield. So naturally, the lower price stocks tend to be a little bit more volatile and tend to offer that higher premium. But I could change that though. I could sort it by lowest to highest naked yield, or I could say, you know what? I wanna sort it by the range in or out of the money. For me, what I'd probably do is sort it by the probability. I can find it, which I think I'm in the stock ones now, so I missed probability. I know it's staring me right in the face. Let me just keep scrolling down here. Sorry about that. <laughs> Strike price. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm just missing. I know it's here. I'm just missing. I think I've walked over it twice now. Um, in any case, so what I'm going to do here is just flip the script. I'm going to sort it by lowest return to highest because that's probably going to be the highest probability um, that I have available. So let's just flip it. Use the radio buttons there. Submit that search. Now here we are. Target. 149.73, the 145 put, 14 days away. What are we? We're 3.2% of the money, 73% probability the stock would be above the price, and it's a 0.8% naked yield for two days. Uh, two weeks, I'm sorry, two weeks was silly. So maybe that's not in your wheelhouse. You want a little bit more return for two weeks, but you've got other things down here. Expedia, eh, CVS, I don't know if we do that, but Toll Brothers, DR Horton just had a big run the other day. Dollar Tree, eh, it's been some speculation was going on that. But you can say here, okay, two weeks out, this is too low for me. I like the probabilities I'm seeing, the 72, 65, 75 range, things of that nature. Okay, let's up that. Let's make that subtle change. What are my targets? What are Vasily's targets? We want a 1.1 minimum percent yield for two weeks. On these types of stocks, we're seeing that are giving a good return. We're seeing quality companies in there. And I want that probability above, let's just put it at 71% or 70%. There we go. CVS, Upstart, UAL, <laughs> that was a fun ride today, wasn't it? That was an interesting thing to wake up to. CCL, 
uh, CleanSpark, Robinhood, and Sunrun? Where where did all the other companies go? Well, either they're just below that 71% probability range I entered, Vasily, or not on the yield. I want to see a few more. Just make subtle adjustments back. 0 0.9. Let's put this back. Let's go 68. Okay. All right. DR Horton, Toast, Dollar Tree, Toll Brothers, excuse me, Lenar, CVS, Upstart. On holding, on, on. That's what, something that I've been interested in. I was going to open that as a married put a little while ago. Uh, am I happy or glad that I didn't? Let me just take a look. I haven't watched it in a while. Ooh. Going back to what we were just talking about, that's what I kind of like to see, even though we see the bearish sell warnings. I might have to revisit this position. It was, I think, over here on the bottom Bollinger Band when On On came up during a discussion, a uh, webinar such as this. I started looking into it. Um, interesting. I'd have to check out where their earnings are, do further research and analysis on that. But that's that's one that's come up for me before. Ernie's in CCL right now, by the way, in the married put portfolio, the fusion portfolio in his trades. We looked at my trades about 40 minutes ago. Okay. So, that's your starting point. Naked put, monthly picks of the day or weekly picks of the day. Now, this is just a quick view. What I'd prefer you to do, Vasily, is to go into the search and use that weekly picks of the day default that we used and then make your adjustments to your time frame, make your adjustments to the yield you want to see and the probability range. And you'll see safer companies. There's safer companies in this list. There's some that I've never heard of that I'd have to research. Um, yeah, I don't know what Jemaya Technologies does off the top of my head. Sorry. Clean Spark, I've heard of, but I haven't researched them. AST Space Mobile, no clue. We can speculate based on the name, but I have no clue what they do. Geo Group Inc., well, that's very broad. <laughs> that could be a number of things, okay? But with those subtle adjustments, avoiding earnings between now and expiration, of course, we'd want to do with this thing as well. But for more insight into what this is, when you go to that view under the naked put or the covered call and you go to weekly picks of the day or monthly picks of the day, you'll see the discussion here of even in a market such as this, what the return expectation was during that time frame with this criteria using the stop orders that he recommends on the positions. This is where I would start. And if I was doing naked puts in my portfolio, I'd be using either monthly or weekly picks of the day with one or two subtle changes we just saw to match my personal goals or my personal stock price preference. And it can be very lucrative. You can find good companies, good returns one to two weeks out in time. It's a good approach. It's a common approach. We have a gentleman, and you know, we're, we're in Wilmington, Delaware, by the way, Vasily here. That's where uh, uh, Ernie formed the company. Of course, he's, we've all been in Delaware, uh, grew up here. I, uh, you know, went to college in Missouri, but Families are here and everything along those lines. Now, there's a gentleman that lives right up in PA, uh, just north of us, right up in Pennsylvania, excuse me, just north of us. And he's been with Power Options almost as long as I have. Now, I started with working with Ernie about 23, 24 years ago, maybe more than that, actually. No, it's about 22. I'm sorry, 21, 22 years. My apologies. In any case, one of these customers are from PA just trades cash secured puts. And when I first met him, he was doing it in about a $600,000 retirement account. 10% out of the money, one month out in time on companies that just he knew of or that he used. You know, one of the things that Kurt Frankenberg, the author of the blueprint, uh, you know, always used to talk about his webinars is the stocks that he liked to invest in were stocks that he used on a regular basis. He's sitting there at Starbucks using their Wi-Fi before we partnered up with him to host some of his webinars or to do some of his videos and he's realizing, I hear three days a week, and this place is always packed. So he started doing Mary puts on Starbucks. And Amazon came out, and he, you know, well, well, Amazon was out for a while anyway, but he saw his wife using Amazon almost weekly. He says, okay, this seems like something everyone's using. So I'm going to do Mary put on Amazon. And the ones that you hear about on a daily basis. But the, the concept there is that you can find those positions, use the search tool under Naked Put, start with the weekly picks of the day. That's our preferred criteria that we would use. Make your subtle adjustments based on, you know, what your account size is, what stocks prices you're looking for. Maybe you want a bigger average stock fund. This is measured in thousands here on the technicals. So it's 500,000 shares on average of the last 90 days. I want it to be a million. So I'm going to change that to a thousand um, in that case. And still stock price above the SMA 20. I'll go ahead and submit that. Is it going to change much? No, most of these are still in that range, but we did narrow it down. But then the subtle differences to what you want for the yield, 
your target goals one week or two weeks out. Your time frame, of course, you can adjust the probability range that you want to make it more comfortable for yourself. I think you're going to find good results, but you can read more about what Ernie experienced, what his thoughts were, what his process was. Just on that main link on the weekly picks of the day, monthly picks of the day for naked puts or covered calls. And then, of course, the bull put weekly picks of the day. You'll notice they're 14 days out in time. This is the one I tested, and that's based on the default criteria in the search for the weekly bull put credit spread. Oh, that's initial values. My apologies. The weekly bull puts, which are looking for 14 days on time, because with all of my testing, I found out that the two week out series for bull put credit spreads allowed you to go a little bit more out of the money than using the weekly options, and you had a higher success rate because it didn't go into the range where you're having to close the spread position for 45 or 50% of your loss in bad market conditions, which is wiping out the weeklies if you had a two or three day bad run in two weeks out of the four week month where it wasn't being hit with the two week out series. You give yourself a little bit more room, still get the good double digit returns. Usually we're up around 14.5, 14.9% is the average. You'll see ones in here with a 17%, 20% down to this 12.4. But as volatility had lowered down, the VIX, as we mentioned, had lowered down at 12.4 range. I'm still okay with 13% on an 11-day trade. Why do I say 11-day trade? Because I wouldn't be opening these positions until Monday, right? My 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 last two uh, bull puts expired today. Uh, some of that married put adjustments I have to use as well is silly. So I'd be opening, I'd be running the search on Monday for new positions. All that being said, even with the safety that you can use with the cash secured naked puts by going further out of the money, I can increase the range out of the money on those bull put credit spreads and increase the probability to look for 85. I'm already looking for 85 as a default, but 88, 90% probabilities or more. Okay, we're back to neutral now, but we still did just come off of those strong bearish sell warnings and a lot of sell warnings in a row. And we've only dropped from 56.33 down to 55.05. So I'm not saying that I think the decline has hit, the correction is done. I'm still hesitant and not opening bull put credit spreads at this time, not opening bull call debit spreads, not opening new calendar spreads. I'm managing my existing calendar spreads, managing my existing married puts with the protection in place, as we talked about a few moments ago. And I'm hesitant right now on opening new positions. but. Now that we're in the neutral, I have a little bit more confidence, seeing a little bit of easing on the valves here of the 13 indicators for the market sentiment tool. And so maybe it's time to consider on Monday getting into new positions. I didn't open any new bullish positions this week, as I mentioned. Um, but, you know, we, we pulled back somewhat. And the VIX helped me out somewhat with that small little teeny, teeny profit because I only had eight contracts. I was just playing around with it to hedge some extra things in case things really got out of whack this week out of nowhere. But we'll see what Monday brings us. And, you know, it's always good to have these discussions on the weekend. You say, oh, okay, well, he gave me some good ideas or Mike gave some ideas. I want to further research this. I'm going to look at some more of his information. And um, something happens over the weekend that neither you or I expected. And we know the market's going to be dropping drastically. The future is going to be dropping drastically before the market opens on Monday. So we'll know that ahead of time a little bit. I could say it's silly. And then we'll say, yeah, maybe it's not the time for new naked puts or new bull put credit spreads right now. Let's take a take a sidebar here and see what happens in the next day or two and then reevaluate what we think is good. In addition to all that, Vasily, remember at any given time, you can just head over to our YouTube channel. You can go into the videos, of course, and you can just run your basic search for, say, naked puts or cash secured puts or put selling. We we'll just do naked puts and you'll see a variety of discussions that we've had. Um, you know, some of these are very old, but you can, uh, rolling a deep in the money management techniques, time decay and decline naked puts versus ratio spreads, exiting a naked put going against you, choosing the best strike price for an optimal cash secured put that's from a year ago, but really obviously the best place to start here, instead of going through all of these, click on the playlists. Uh, we about 10 different strategies. We've got selections of nine to 10 different videos in each strategy. Bull call debits, volatility, call buying, bear puts, calendar calls, bull puts, and here you go. Selling cash, uh, selling naked or cash secured puts, nine videos. Going from everything from returns criteria and simulating a trading plan, uh, tools to use on power options, repair techniques, and more. Uh, selling puts, uh, evaluating strike price at the money versus out of the money. 
um, for a specific criteria, managing naked put positions, uh, general ideas on closing, when to stop managing a naked put. Do you keep rolling down and out, rolling down and out? No, nah, you got to have a bottom line somewhere in your trading plan. Um, or should I continue to sell puts or buy the stock now? What's the advantage of continuing to roll down versus just taking assignment at one point and then using maybe another repair technique, such as the stock repair tool we offer in Power Options to help you get back to break even faster? These first couple ones, I think, will give you a good idea, not only on the tools, but the returns, criteria, simulating a trading plan, looking at some historical views, Vasily, that'll help you out as well. In addition to this, which will probably be posted sometime tomorrow afternoon as well, as just sort of a reminder that you can go through and review. Okay. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are at 5.40 p.m. Eastern time. Um, I don't see any other questions come in. Vasily says, thank you. Vasily, you're, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Great question, of course, and uh, more than happy to answer that for you with my thoughts. And uh, there's some other videos there that will go more in depth for you also that you want to take a look at uh, when you have the time. And uh, we'll be able to continue some of that discussion at any time as well. Mm -hmm.